Good evening. I'm Addison Wesley, and this is The Witching Hour. My guest tonight is Senator Oswald P. Kensington. Senator Kensington, what was it like growing up as the son of Rosie Kensington? Did you ever help him with any of his inventions? Well, not the wands. There are things you don't give a seven-year-old, and a seven-year-old wizard trying to handle a Kensington Mark IV would leave a huge crater in a greasy spot. <laughs> but, uh, there was the Kensington Cobalt toy line, and I was Dad's favored test animal for those. I'd come up for breakfast in the morning, and I'd see these most incredible things on the kitchen table. Got to where Mom would have to grab me by the collar and sit me down and get some food into my stomach. Uh, of course, the brooms, well, that was a little bit much for me at the time, and with the breeze breaker scandal, of course, all that ended just in a day, that all ended. And uh, after that, it wasn't good at all. I mean, I was at Averstrom during the worst of it, but uh, I got to watch his life disintegrate around him, everything he labored for all his life, all his achievements just forgotten utterly. And, uh, and that was the saddest part of the whole thing. And uh, that so it kind of balanced out, I suppose. How did the Breeze Breaker scandal affect your father and your family? He died by inches. One minute, the Kensington Wands Works was one of the most successful wizarding enterprises, producing some of the most amazing and useful items ever found in our world. And of course, its legacy from World War II, it produced the weapons that helped to defend our nation. And then suddenly, in a day, shut down. It's still there. The, the building is still there. My father left it just the way it was. The tools are on the workbenches. The, everything's covered with rust and cobwebs waiting for the workers to come back. But he never recovered. He, his old joy of life was gone. He kept hoping they would open it up one day. And... Uh, Never did. I understand your marriage helped you get through and that your wife's potion concern is doing quite well. Do you help her at all? Beautiful Beatrice. Well, if she wouldn't want something, she tends to get it. Uh, that was amazing that Beatrice would so, be so fond of me as she is and that we would we'd unite our two family lines. The Toborieska potions form is one of the best that's ever been. They produce some of the most amazing tactics and uh, potions, ever, things you ever saw. And I am, at times, allowed into Beatrice's lab. Uh, there, are, there are times when I'm not. And uh, she'll say, Ozzy, I need another wand on this. Would you please zap that for me? And that sort of thing. Uh, I have told Beatrice there will never be any testing on me. That, that, that I will not permit. <laughs> but no, it, uh, it two, two people got together on that, and our marriage has been very successful. She is a wonderful lady and a great source of strength at a time when I've needed all the strength I can have behind me. Why did you enter politics? Well... Part of it was seeing what our government could do to someone. And I had my causes. I was a believer in half-breed rights. The idea that a centaur would be any less precious in God's sight or in the law than a human just because he looked different from the hips down, that infuriated me. And I don't like the way we treat dragons. These are intelligent, uh, sentient creatures, and they do not deserve to be treated like monsters, studied like bugs, kept in reservations, that sort of thing. I've actually always been a strong argument, arguer for animagus rights, uh, although I've had my problems with some varieties of animagi, I suppose. I can think of one particularly, Colonius Aberfoyle. But also, I had the legacy, the Kensington tradition of service to the Republic. It wasn't just me, of course. You know that my great, great, I don't know how many times removed grandfather was in the hold of the Bonham Richard, frantically keeping the water out as the ship settled in. And of course, there was my great grandfather who was at Nashville, who helped keep General Thomas's army from being swept away in the spring floods. And then my grandfather, of course, who was a friend of Theodore Roosevelt and Thomas Edison's. And then my father, who had done so much for the country, I felt I had to give something back. Senator, how do you explain your sudden support of the Pretend Act? Probably the single worst political mistake I've ever made in my life. And I can find myself praying that it remains the worst mistake I ever made. That was 2007. Uh, we were scared to death. The Secretary of Magic had been assassinated by Persephone. I mean, she was a metamorph uh, magus. And we thought that if we could control animagi, transfiguration, that sort of thing, she would reveal herself. We could catch her. And there wouldn't be any more dead secretaries of magic. Uh, it, it was a mistaken response because what it did is it made a lot of people who were very good citizens, very full civil rights, everything else, feel like they were second-class citizens, like their own government had turned on them. And I should have known what that felt like at the time. So it was a horrible mistake, but it was a mistake made under tremendous pressure when I was one swing vote. I wasn't the whole source of that uh, bill, no matter what uh, Aberfoyle will tell you. Uh, it was the worst mistake I ever made. What about the MCA? That is an ongoing political mistake and a complete and utter disaster. The Muggle Cooperation Act was Polonius Aberfoyle's idea. 
that if we brought in muggles to investigate our world and help us manage it, somehow things would work out better than they did when muggles came in, burned us, hung, hanged us, drove us forth into the night. Somehow he thought it would be a good thing this time, and what do we get? We get a man, Simon Drake, who makes Voldemort look like a camp counselor, coming in, menacing our world, spreading chaos and disaster in every which direction, and Aberfoyle is still supporting this horrifying act. I spoke against it in the debate. I spoke against it in the Senate. I'm speaking against it now. It must be repealed before it destroys us all. You made your famous speech about not trusting the muggles. What's your view of the rest of the world? More affectionate than you might think. Uh, a lot of people don't remember that in the 80s, in, in the speech team, I competed against muggles as part of the, what we used to call the Salem Preparatory School. We never told the other kids what we were preparing for. But I got to know them very well. We'd eat lunch together. They eat some of the most amazing things. Uh, and the music, some of which was very good, but there was this song they had back in the 80s called Behind Blue Eyes that they would play all the time. I think they called them boom boxes. If I heard that thing on a boom box one more time, I'd wander no one. I was going to blow it to pieces. I couldn't stand that song. But I, I've always had a great respect for muggles. I mean, you could argue that what happened to my father, the breeze breaker, when he was trying to make a broom that muggles could, could ride, and that's what destroyed him, the wisdom gamut, the press, everyone. Uh, you'd think I'd resent them for that, but no, no. They, they, they're the other half of the country. They're as precious in God's sight as we are. But uh, I can certainly say that the event has shown that I was quite right to oppose the MCA. I don't think it's a good thing when smuggles are in our world or we're in theirs. We frighten them, and when they stampede, they kill us. You have often been at odds with the faculty and staff of the Abstrom Academy. Why? Well, I want to say at the beginning that my relationship with Abstrom is not one of hate. It's one of very great love. Abstrom was my refuge when they were in the process of destroying my father. It was where I went to learn and become the wizard that I am today. I mean, several of the professors still remember me there. I, Professor Bedreau, I think, has tried to assign me detention even though I graduated in 1983. Uh, <laughs> The uh, I, Abstrom is tremendously important to us. It's the cradle of the future. It's where the wizards that, the, uh, that will inherit this world that we're trying to keep in good shape for them are being trained even now. And we've lost a wizarding school. The Timbernack School for Boys was utterly annihilated that students were butchered. That's not going to happen again, not to Abstrom, not where I went. And so when I think that something's being badly done at Abstrom, I didn't think Clark Dowling was a particularly good headmaster and vocally said so. When I think the students aren't being taught right or the right subjects, I say so. And when I say something, I tend to say it very loudly. But I do love the place. And I do think that some of the professors are extremely good. Uh, Trent Vertigen is a, he's the son of my father's old friend, Edgar, and is a fine professor. Uh, Kobayashi Sensei is the new headmistress, I understand. And I think she'll do very well. She's uh, very dedicated, very, she's a samurai, she serves. But uh, if something goes wrong at Abstrom, you will be hearing about it. And of course, the security I've had my problems with. Twice, dark wizards have entered the school and menaced the students. Once I was able to be there, but uh, it, it can't happen again. Senator, many people see you as unapproachable and stern. Do you have a softer side? Well, Beatrice would certainly say so. And of course, my colleagues in the Senate know that I'm one of the worst punsters they've ever made. In fact, I've, there was one motion proposed that my joke should be banned. <laughs> I've played practical jokes. I've done things in the Senate cloakroom that probably have never been done in the history of our nation and should never perhaps be done again. I, uh, I do have my softer side. I, uh, I like to fish, for one thing. I don't believe in using bait. I think you should use other means to catch your fish. I uh, collect magical artifacts, arcana and that sort of th source. I, my father did that, so I got a lot of his ideas. And I study things to see how they can be used. Uh, I write poetry and that sort of thing. But people, Americans have the luxury of only seeing their government sometimes at a time of crisis. And at a time of crisis, you'll see me waving my wand, screaming at to the top of my lungs, and being very frightened or very active, at the, or maybe both at the same time. So uh, I do have a softer side, I suppose. So what started your troubles with the Dowlings? Well, it didn't start out as troubles. It started out as a very dear and cherished friendship. Samuel Dowling befriended me in my third year of Abstrom. He was two years ahead of me. And he and his wonderful wife, Hannah, took uh, a very great interest in how I was doing, which meant a lot because times were very rough in those days. Uh, the trouble came with their son, Clark, who is a fine wizard. He has many admirable qualities. But when he started acting as a vigilante with his group, the Dark Hunters, I had to oppose that, because if you're a member of the wizarding government, you cannot approve 
of someone being judge, jury, and executioner, however much some of the people the Dark Hunters hunted down desperately needed to be dead. So that was a strain, and I'm afraid Samuel's and my friendship cracked somewhat under that. But I have made a point of not responding to Clark's attacks upon me. I have made a point of ignoring some of the things he said about me in the past, and perhaps someday that breach will heal. You seem to have a great many stories to tell, and I hear a rumor about a book. Well, sometimes I feel that Polonius Aberfoyle has an exclusive contract with all our wizarding media about what story will be told, and there are there is another side to every point of this issue. Uh, the story of my father's fall, decline and fall is, of course, one that I think needs to be told. Some of the good times, some of the other inventions that people don't even think about, the con contribution of my family during World War II, it's been forgotten today, but at the time it was vital. Uh, my father's friendships with other wizards and so forth, some of the people he got to know, General Marshall, President Roosevelt, that sort of thing. Uh, and, of course, my, the story of my life, this caricature of Oswald Kensington as the screaming, muggle-hating monster, the beast of Valak Inwood, that has to go. It's not true. It's not me. And about the best way, I think, to put that monster back in its grave with a stake through its heart is will be coming in this book that I plan on writing as soon as the election is over. I, people suggest that I hire a ghostwriter. Some of them are very good, but I think I'll uh, probably just do it myself. Senator Kensington, why should you be Secretary of Magic? My family has a very proud legacy of service to the Republic. I, I mean, my great-great-great-grandfather was in the hold of the Bonham Richard when John Paul Jones was desperately fighting to win the battle and give our Navy a stand in the war. My great-grandfather was at Nashville, keeping General Thomas's army from being washed away in the spring rains. My grandfather, as you know, was a friend of Theodore Roosevelt and Thomas Edison, and of course my father's legacy. They all served. They all did things that our nation needed and stood in the way of bad forces coming at it. Well, here am I, and we are in the worst time of crisis I think we've ever been in. This titanic shadow of Simon Drake looming over the landscape, a man with horrific power in both the Muggle world and our world. And we need someone to stand and face him and take what is coming in behalf of the Republic so that it will not be undefended at a time of great crisis and need. And I think I'm the man for the job. I think I'm the person who understands the nature of the threat and am willing to give everything I've got no matter what it costs me, to uh, do what needs to be done. Senator, thank you very much for your time. We'll be covering the 501st Wizarding Electoral Debate here on WNN. I'm Addison Wesley, and we'll see you next time on The Witching Hour. I'm on The Witching Hour. I'm on The Witching Hour.